publika ima dosta pitanja, možete i vi da počnete, mogu i ja da pitam naše goste kako god. Javite se, samo dignite ruku ako hoćete. Ok, that was short introduction, what we are going to talk. All three of you were talking about DNS and first we had David who had a really interesting presentation in regard of DOT and DOH. And I would like to ask you two about Quad9 and Quad1 about implementation of DOH and do you have any measurements how much it is used and by whom? Yeah, so I don't have any numbers off the top of my head. Um, I don't actually think we've published any numbers publicly on adoption. I know that apart from the, the Firefox users, it's not very high. And the reason for that is kind of what we discuss, discussed earlier. If you don't know what you're doing, which you know is the majority of the population, um, then it's really hard to set this up. So. For example, you can go on the Cloudflare website and read the guide on how to set up Do. It's not trivial, right? It's it's actually pretty complicated unless you're, you know, using using Firefox or using Chrome. So the percentage of people using it is 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 still quite low, I would say. I don't know, maybe. Okay. Have yeah, but uh, I have one comment uh, because first version of uh, of uh, Firefox, uh, everybody started talking, was, do you want to be secure, yes, and all traffic goes to your DNS servers. Did you see that uh, peak and the... Uh... Sorry, yeah, so actually um, when this was first introduced, it was only running on the nightly version of Firefox. So there was no crazy spike of Doe just going up. Um, because it was just the, 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 the beta version, or I think it's not even the beta version, it's the alpha version, right? So it's the nightly build where it was first introduced. Um, and then that's when all of the backlash happened, right? So people were like, oh my God, you are rerouting all of our DNS traffic through this American company that we've never heard of. Um, this is not good. When in fact, like, it was, very much a choice, right? I, I don't know what percentage of Firefox users use the nightly build. I would estimate it's less than a full percentage point. Um, so there was no real spike, uh, but the backlash was pretty heavy. And before it was actually rolled out publicly, they, they added all of these changes, right? Whereby you can now choose your door provider. You can go to Firefox and say, I don't actually want to use Cloudflare for my, my, as my door provider. I want to use Google or I want to use Quad9 or someone else, right? So before they actually rolled it out to the proper, proper, full build version, um, they made a lot of changes, which I think is quite sensible. Okay, thank you. So right now for percentages, just because I was looking at this the other day, for Doe, we're looking at less than 1% of our traffic right now is DOH, um, and I think slightly more than 1% is DOT. Um, and that, but those numbers are growing both very quickly. Um, we're looking at probably around a 10% to 12% growth per week right now in both. But they're still very low numbers. Um, DOT has been growing quite quickly because of Android, um, because of the automatic conversion. If, you, if you're using, uh, if you get in your DACP server, if 9.9.9.9 .9 is handed out, uh, there's automatically a probe which will try to convert over to DOA or DOT automatically. And so that's actually been bumping the numbers very steadily for quite some time on DOT. DOH has been not as, not as large. And I think that that's going to change, of course, when the default behavior of Firefox becomes DOH. And what really is going to change it is the, is the Windows conversion. But I think we're still looking at quite a bit of time before that occurs. The, the vast majority of traffic right now is unencrypted. Um, you know, 98% plus is unencrypted. I don't expect that to change uh, overnight, uh, but it will. It will be. It won't be overnight, but it will take several months. If both Chrome and Firefox, and also I know Opera is also considering it, 
um, although they're, they're a very small percentage. Um, but if, if the browsers start to change over and they, they require DOH, then we'll see this happen relatively quickly. And that, I think, is one of the concerns is that, you know, it's not overnight, meaning it's not literally overnight, but over the course of a, a couple of months, we could see the majority of DNS queries going from unencrypted to encrypted because most people are now on automated updates for their browsers. And if the browser includes it, then it's going to happen. And that's, you know, the decisions of a very small number of software shops um, are going to influence significantly uh, uh, data flows and potentially policy worldwide. And that's one of the things that makes everybody nervous about these protocols, I think. Yeah, the, that's, that's true. Uh, and uh, I would like to ask David, because uh, most of uh, the articles uh, talking about DOH and DOT are complaining about uh, aggregation of DNS queries to big players like uh, Quad9, Quad1, Google, uh, we have announcement of, uh, that uh, Apple uh, is going to, to, to build their uh, DNS infrastructure, uh, also Microsoft a couple of days ago. Um, so uh, what is the bigger issue than aggregation to few big players? Uh, because personally, I believe to big players, and uh, I don't think they are going to do any funny stuff uh, So Maybe one day, because if we are talking about uh, uh, commercial issues, uh, maybe it will change. But uh, can you explain uh, a little bit more about application doing DNS and how uh, dangerous uh, is that? So if I make application and uh, I point that to my DNS server, I can do whatever I want. I can tweak root, ser uh, uh, root servers, I can tweak uh, DNSSEC, actually remove DNSSEC uh, stuff at all, and resolve uh, DNS queries the way I want. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> again, it's about un unintended consequences. If, if what John talks about comes true, and then a year from now we're sitting here at the sixth edition of RSNOG, and the majority of DNS traffic is encrypted to the recursive resolver, I'd like to think that's a good thing. I'd like to think that's good for our users. But DNS is a funny thing. It's just this little protocol that fundamentally hasn't changed that much in 34 years. I think even, yeah. yeah, but it's one of the most important things in the entire world of the internet. When, you make, when you're an application maker, and you're spawning thing, you know, you're spawning like a Chromium browser inside the application. Like, you know, if you're on Reddit, a lot of folks use, and it spawns a browser. We don't know what the browser is. We don't know much about it. We don't know what it's doing. And the sites that it's taking us to, we're not able to verify just by looking at it that it's the actual site that the domain owner intended. And so, more than just a function of of DOH and DOT is just the overall concept that DNS can be abused by unscrupulous application makers in a way that we've never really thought of before and our users certainly aren't going to like. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's an industry issue for everybody. Um, DNS, DOH and DOT is simply bringing these more to the forefront than we've talked about before. But it's funny because you can do it, you, can, you don't need DOH or DOT to do what you're, you know, these parade of horribles, these nightmare scenarios we think about. You can actually just do that with DNS out of the box. Uh, that's true, I can, but uh, it can be tracked if it is encrypted and sent over the network and especially our uh, HTTPS uh, network. It is very difficult and hard to block that. You know, 854 is port which is used only for DNS, so we can track where uh, DNS queries are heading. We don't know what those queries are, but uh, which uh, HTTPS, as you mentioned, uh, we don't know is that DNS query or it is uh, just uh, HTTPS uh, traffic. And uh, yesterday we discussed a little bit uh, what and where we are heading, because uh, I don't believe that uh, many countries, let's mention China and the uh, Great Firewall, 
will appreciate uh, uh, what's going on with DNS. And uh, many other countries will just follow and uh, I believe uh, we'll have some kind of fragmentation of, of the internet. What do you think? Well, I think first of all, it's really interesting that the main contribution I feel like of DOH and DOT is that people are now talking about DNS, right? Because as you said before, you could, you know, hijack DNS, you could, you know, have root leaks and stuff like that. Nobody cared, right? Because no one understand it. They still don't understand it, but now they're like, oh, someone is encrypting this thing that I didn't understand. So now I can't even try to understand anymore because it's just gone, right? Um, which, is, which is cool. It's maybe a little too late now, but at least people are now talking about it and seeing it as an issue. Um, so I think to your point, right, if more countries start to do things like China and start to block things, um, you know, we talked about Euronet before, which was a proposed idea of having sort of a great firewall, but for Europe, like these types of things as they're now being discussed, people will take more seriously and won't just say, oh, you're talking about this thing I don't understand, like, yeah, you know, whatever. But in fact, people will look at it and say, oh, actually, you are fundamentally messing with everything I do on the internet. Maybe we should like take a step back, you know, even if I don't understand it, invite some experts, explain this to me, and then we can have a real debate about it. So I, I think it's a positive change in that regard. I think there's a question way yes. back who's like very enthusiastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I want to ask you uh, about Cloudflare. You say in your slides that you like don't log IP with 1.1.1. Right. And then like three sentences, sentences down is like we delete logs every two days. So what gets logged? Yeah, so if you go on our website, there's a very specific list of things that we do log. So in some specific cases, we will log query names, for example, okay. but they will not be associated to a user. It will just say, we've, you know. Just a request. We right, don't, so yeah. like a million people have opened this website. We don't know who they are or where they're coming from, but this website's like been, been queried a lot of times. Um, one of the main reasons to do that, and I think John talked about it briefly earlier, um, it's not just the whole compliance thing, but also for debugging, right? If we completely throw away everything and something breaks, like we will never know that it's broken. Um, so that's the main reason we do that. But again, on our website, there's a very detailed list of, of what we keep um, for these 24 hours. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. To, to go back to your question about, you know, what are the bad things that are occurring and how is this happening? I'll, I'll, I'll try to summarize kind of our, or my, at least my personal opinion on how DOH is at best neutral. Um, you know, we, we supply DOH, we, we provide DOH in a centralized way. Um, at the same time, uh, I, I'm not sure that it's necessarily a good thing. Um, it, it, it provides encryption. I think everybody on this board and pretty much everybody everywhere agrees that encryption, being able to provide protection from interception or rewrite is a good thing, no matter how it's done. The, the problem is that DOH does it in a way that, that accelerates the cat and mouse game between people who are trying to to maliciously, or I shouldn't say maliciously, to, that the, it, it pits the end user against a network operator. And because DOH now means that the network operator who used to control the DNS server uh, doesn't. And they, have, they can't even see what the transactions are. And ultimately, that's going to lead to a power struggle between end users and network operators. In many cases, the end user is going to win meaning that their encryption strategy will work and no one will interfere with it because there's, there isn't enough money or staff or desire by the network operator to interfere with the query stream or to examine it. However, I also believe that in a large number of cases, the network operator is going to win. They're going to say, well, okay, if every browser is now a VPN, we're disconnecting you all from the internet and that everybody now has to go through a proxy in order to get to the internet, you know, your, your clever encryption model isn't going to work because there is no longer end-to-end -end connectivity. And so for some people, it's going to improve conditions. And I believe for some people, ultimately, over time, it's going to make conditions worse. Um, I, we are headed in this direction anyway. DOH is simply an acceleration of the process. It is not the cause of this process but it's a thing that is going to push that, that uh, user versus network operator uh, uh, conflict much more quickly towards an end 
that may not be good for everyone. David, you do not have a comment on that. Okay, uh, thank you, and uh, I agree. Uh, the encryption is good stuff, and uh, both HTTPS and uh, DOH and uh, DOT are good, but uh, uh, how we can control the way uh, how it is implemented? Uh, you know, in my opinion, it is great if, uh, for example, we have the example of Firefox uh, uh, just uh, pointing to, to uh, dot one, dot one, dot one, dot one. Uh, now we had choose. So if I have a, a DOH-enabled uh, resolver, uh, and people can choose that, that's the main point, that uh, we have choice. Uh, the danger is that uh, that can be hidden into application and application can do uh, some funny stuff, uh, actually not application, but uh, application can point to uh, DNS resolvers which can do funny stuff and resolve uh, DNS uh, queries the way it maybe malicious, malicious owner of, of, of them uh, wants to do. Okay, are there other questions? Hello, uh, I would like to ask people from Quad9 and Cloudflare, uh, do you use DOT when your resolvers are contenting authorities name server? Do you think that there is a point or use case for setting DOT or encrypted communications right on the source of the information. Do, do people in, in Cloudflare, do they have thousands and thousands uh, of authority, authoritative zones on their name servers? Do you use DOT on your so, authoritative name servers? So the answer to that is that, to, I'll go kind of in backwards order. Uh, for Quad9, we believe, yes, that, that is a very important aspect of the DNS that is currently not uh, standardized. There is a working group on that. Um, there are some pre-standards uh, uh, attempts already underway to get authoritative, like as an example, Facebook right now is running uh, DOT for their authoritative servers. Um, we believe, Quad9 believes that that is a, an excellent next step to get the authoritative to recursive encrypted. Um, we're waiting for a standards-based method to do that. Um, and I think everybody, and I won't speak for Cloudflare, I'll let them speak, but I think everybody in the, in the space, everybody in the recursive resolver space is very interested in that. It's the last unencrypted leg. Uh, and so, so, yes, we are working towards that. It, that. To end users, that doesn't mean much, but between uh, you know, enterprise or ISPs and authoritative servers, it means quite a bit because it's that typically the cross-national borders is where your DNS is being observed and that's typically between the recursive resolver and the authoritative resolver um, is where that, that, that is occurring. So I think that that's an aggressively pursued model. Yeah, I think Cloudflare is very much in the same boat, although we are in a very unique position, right, because we do provide sort of both sides of the equation. Um, and typically, not just for DNS, but kind of all like new standards that are de being developed, uh, we're pretty actively involved in not only developing the standards itself, so I know members of our team are on that DOE working group, et cetera, like trying to draft out the RFCs for that. Um, and then what we quite often do in our dashboard is that we provide these new protocols or new options even before they're standardized. So we will have, for example, we had TLS 1.3 um, available for our customers even before it was an approved standard, right? Obviously with the caveat saying, look, this is not completely finalized yet, but we, we try to push things out even before they're standardized. Um, and now you can sort of, you know, judge us or mistrust us for trying to influence the way that standards are being implemented, but that's sort of our approach to kind of pursuing that avenue. <clears throat> I'm not gonna give an answer, I'm actually gonna ask you a question. It's an, it's an honest question. For a network operator who actually runs their own recursive service for all of their users, why is it, go why is it good to encrypt the queries and responses between that recursive resolver and the authoritatives? Philosophically, why is it good? There's no end user IP, there shouldn't be end user IP information being sent. It's simply asking, hey, 
give me the next authoritative server down the chain. It doesn't impact the users. What's the privacy concern? Why is it good? Well, if you're using ECS, there is some yeah. component. <laughs> so, so, but without, even without ECS, by raising the difficulty level of intercepting anything, you increase security for everything as well. So just by pushing that floor up, and making all DNS encrypted, it becomes less unusual to have DNS encrypted, right? You, and it also increases the level of effort so that somebody who is trying to do interception has to, has to cast a much wider net um, to figure out what's going on. So that's, I mean, that's an, that's an obvious answer. There are probably many more, I'll, uh, but that's, that's one that comes to mind immediately. Yeah, but uh, may I add one question? Because uh, <clears throat> we're talking about privacy. And uh, uh, HTTPS uh, header uh, consists of address as well. And looking just address and looking uh, at the size of the packet, we can pretty much uh, sure, uh, uh, be sure in guessing where it is. Uh, actually, we know where, where, uh, where it goes and uh, from where uh, we are getting that packet. But looking just at size, we can guess what page or uh, what query uh, went there. I'll, I'll take a couple of things on that. So from the DNS perspective, there's padding. So uh, DNS queries can be padded, and I know Cloudflare does that. We're actually waiting for some patches to do that on Quad9. So you can insert information into the DNS query that more or less disguises what the DNS query was involved with when it's encrypted. Um, second of all, there's SNI encryption that is coming. Um, so when you connect to an HTTPS server, a portion of your, a lot of people don't know this, and it's always surprising to me how many people don't know it. When you connect to an HTTPS server, the first part of your connection is unencrypted, and it includes the name of the server to which you are trying to connect. So even if the IP address is, a, is on, a, on a CDN that hosts thousands of different content uh, objects, someone looking at your network traffic can tell what you're trying to get to, or at least they can tell the host that you're trying to get to. Uh, SNI encryption is coming. That's, that's a, another one of those very aggressive things, and I think that's a, I want to say that's a fallout from Edward Snowden, but I'm not sure. Uh, but, but being able to encrypt the SNI component. Um, and then uh, the last thing I'll add is that the HTTPS transaction is well outside of anything that the DNS providers can solve, and so that's really the W3 see and other people who are going to have to fix HTTPS uh, content uh, determination based on, on fingerprinting. There, there, that's a whole other working group that has to solve those problems. Okay. Thank you. And uh, David, you didn't answer, actually, I, I asked uh, uh, DNS providers, but uh, I know that uh, Paul Hoffman is doing some measurements uh, for ICANN. Do you have that? numbers or it is uh, still we, we, ongoing? Yeah, we haven't published yet. And you cannot tell us? <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks. Okay, uh, one more question, two more questions actually. Uh, the first one, quite easy I suppose. Uh, if uh, lawful interception uh, comes and asks for a uh, key, will you provide encryption? decryption? Decryption key for HTTPS? Yes. yes. So, okay, difficult answer there. So, we will obey the law as it applies to us. And if the law does not apply to us, or if we can put uh, legal barriers in the way, we will do that. So, I cannot say that we will not abide by the law, right? That's not something oh, we can do. Of course, of course. So, so, if there's a legal requirement for us to provide a key, we will. We have never been asked for that, and I suspect we never will. Um, and I can tell you that, I will give you a hint that we're looking at policy methods of solving that problem at a higher layer, and we'll have more news on that in the next five or six months. Okay. Um, but but th that's... I suppose under some circumstances, yes, we, we would have to, but I can't imagine what those circumstances would be because that would be a, uh, that would be a very, very big deal. Uh, and, and the repercussions from that would be more significant than I can imagine any investigation would be worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to add to that, to Cloudflare, obviously we're also US-based. Um, we are very aggressively fighting any national security letter that comes in. 
Um, so typically in, in the United States, um, the government can send basically secret letters to a company and say, you have to give us this information and you must never talk about it. Um, we have and we will continue to completely ignore that and publish all of these letters. Um, so if we are ever being forced to do that, we will tell people. Um, we've never been forced to do it. We have a bunch of canneries on our website basically saying we have never done X and then should we ever secretly be forced to do that, then we can re remove those like negative statements. Um, but yeah, I agree with John. Like if someone, like if the government decides to do that, that basically disrupts how everyone is doing everything, right? And I can't imagine they would want to do that. Um, Apart from that, I mean, and that's Cloudflare specific, we have a couple of technologies that we've um, built whereby customers can retain control over their keys without putting them onto Cloudflare infrastructure, um, but giving us um, access to those keys through a couple of encrypted channels. It's very interesting if you want to read about cryptography. Um, it's called Keyless. You can re read up about it on Cloudflare. Um, so that gives some sort of extra protection, but obviously if the government wanted to breach that, then they probably could, right? They have guns and we don't, so um, at the end of the day, they, they can do whatever they want, in theory. Okay, I ask the question because simply the, the choice of uh, DNS provider is uh, trust issue. And uh, they will trust you, but they are not sure that they will trust, let's say, men in the middle. That is, you hold the keys. And you could be trusted or not trusted. Uh, and the second question, uh, unfortunately, uh, man from Cisco left. Uh, um, he claims that uh, DNS service uh, works uh, well independently on the latency. Like, okay, the DNS server is not in Serbia, so what? It's in Romania, it's in Hungary, it's 10 milliseconds away. Uh, what, is, what is your uh, standpoint? Obviously, you put 200 uh, servers all around the world trying to decrease the latency. Is the latency crucial or not? Right, I mean, so what we always say is we're trying to fight the speed of light, right? Like the only thing that we can't change is the speed of light. We can't impact that. So literally the only thing we can do to make it faster, right, if we already have fiber, is to physically be closer, right? So the more points of presence we have, the better the service will be, right? And I mean, there's a reason that Cloudflare has close to 200 of these presences and Quad9 is, you know, catching up and Google, I don't know how many they have, right? And same for Cisco. Um, there's a reason they're doing that and that's just performance. So yeah, absolutely. I think if you, anyone can build their own DNS resolver, right? Like it's not that hard as software for it on the internet, but if I only have one server and I put my res resolver on that and that's it, and then I start traveling around the world, like my internet will be really, really slow. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's quite important. Yeah, we spoke about uh, the, the security issues like uh, my data will not leave the rack, and that is okay, but I'm asking about the performance, the latency. Sure, so um, there was actually a paper that was just released within the last two months on this very topic. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who wrote it, but I think you'd, some keywords would bring it up for you. Um, the, and the net of that was that, yes, it does make a difference, but not as much as you might think. Um, that, that 15 milliseconds or so of difference doesn't make that much difference on a page load, on a, on a web page load, but if you start moving it out, it starts to get noticeable in a minor way, and that's because of the large number of non-cacheable objects in a lot of advertising networks um, that, that they, force a, they force a lookup that goes all the way back to the, um, to the authoritative server uh, for you know, web bugs and things like that. But it, it did not seem to make much of a difference, you know, if it plus or minus 15 milliseconds was not noticeable. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the details on the paper, but it was a... I no, okay, I but 15 it milliseconds, it's like 1,500 kilometers. It's, it's quite a distance, yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, it, but again, you, it, there's loss and there's latency, uh, and then there's, there's actually the latency of the lookup itself. So there's not just the latency between the network component, but there's once a query reaches a recursive resolver, how long does it take to get an answer back from the authoritatives? And that's, a, that's actually just as much a significant uh, issue as the, as the latency to the re recursive. Um, so you. cache size and everything else has a lot to play in that.
Je li ima još neko pitanje iz publike, pošto smo malo preterali ovog puta, da ušli smo u ručak. Thank you very much. We have to stop if somebody has a question. You are available for questions of audience.